All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. So for my solution, first start with 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. Now, 2 to the power of 19, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 18 plus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 18 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 18. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 18 plus 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1. And I have minus 2 to the power of 18 at the end. Now from here, I can go ahead and factor out 2 to the power of 18. So I have 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now 2 to the power of 1, that's simply equal to 2. So I have 2 to the power of 18 times 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1, that's equal to 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 18 times 1. Now 2 to the power of 18 times 1 is simply just 2 to the power of 18. So I'm simply left with 2 to the power of 18. Now, although this is a solution, I'm actually going to find a way to simplify this. So 2 to the power of 18, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 9 times 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 9 times 2, that's going to be 2 to the power of 9 to the power of 2. Now 2 to the power of 9, this is equal to 512. So I have 512 to the power of 2. 512, I'm going to rewrite this as 500 plus 12 to the power of 2. Now this is the same thing as 500 plus 12 times 500 plus 12. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by distributing the 500. So now I have 500 times 500 plus 12 times 500. Now if I distribute the 12, I have plus 12 times 500 plus 12 times 12. Now 500 times 500, that's going to be 250,000 plus 12 times 500, that's going to be 6,000, plus again 6,000, plus 144. Now, 6,000 plus 6,000 is 12,000, and 12,000 plus 250,000 is 262,000, plus 144 is 262,144. So this is my answer. All right, guys. So in this equation, I have 2 to the power of m minus 2 to the power of n is equal to 8,064. So I want to find the value of m and n. So because 2 to the power of m minus 2 to the power of n, because this is positive, we know that 2 to the power of m is greater than 2 to the power of n, meaning that m is greater than n, because both of these are the same bases. So I'm going to let m equal to n plus k, and k is an integer. So if m equals n plus k, then I have 2 to the power of n plus k minus 2 to the power of n is equal to 8,064. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of n plus k, that's going to equal 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of k minus 2 to the power of n is equal to 8,064. Now, if I factor out 2 to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 8,064. And 8,064, this is simply equal to 128 times 63. So I have 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 128 times 63. Now notice how 2 to the power of n, that's going to be an even number, and 2 to the power of k minus 1, that's going to be an odd number. 
because 2 to the power of k is going to be even, and an even number minus 1 is going to be odd. And 128, this is even, and 63, this is odd. So now, meaning, I can simply set the evens equal to each other, and I can set the odds equal to each other. So 2 to the power of n, this is equal to 128. So let's first go ahead and solve this. If 2 to the power of n is equal to 128, well, 128, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 7. So I have 2 to the power of n equal to 2 to the power of 7, and this means that n is equal to 7. Now, we have 2 to the power of k minus 1 equals 63. So if 2 to the power of k minus 1, if 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 63, then all I have to do is simply add 1 on both sides. These two cancel out, and I'm left with 2 to the power of k is equal to 64. Now 64, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 6. So I have 2 to the power of k is equal to 2 to the power of 6, meaning k is equal to 6. So now, remember how we said m is equal to n plus k. So in this case, n is 7 and k is 6, so m is equal to 6 plus 7, which is 13. So m is equal to 13, and n is equal to 7. So these are my solutions. All right, so in this problem, I have 100 to the power of 100 over 50 to the power of 50. So 100 is the same thing as 50 plus 50. So I'm going to rewrite this as 100 to the power of 50 plus 50. And I have this over 50 to the power of 50. So now, an important property of exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is simply equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So as you see, in this case, I have 100 to the power of 50 plus 50. So 100 to the power of 50 plus 50 this is going to equal a to the power of m, so 100 to the power of 50 times a to the power of n. And n is the same thing as m, so again, 100 to the power of 50. So now I have 100 to the power of 50 times 100 to the power of 50 over 50 to the power of 50. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of, or sorry, over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So in this case, I can rewrite this as 100 to the power of 50 times 100 over 100 to the power of 50 over 50 to the power of 50. And now I'm going to rewrite 100 to the power of 50 over 50 to the power of 50 as 100 over 50 to the power of 50. So now 100 divided by 50 is simply 2. So now I have 100 to the power of 50 times 2 to the power of 50. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is simply equal to a times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have 100 to the power of 50 times 2 to the power of 50. We can think of a as 100, b as 2, and m as 50. So this is going to equal 100 times 2 to the power of 50. Well, 100 times 2 is simply 200, so I'm left with 200 to the power of 50. So this is my answer. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of two minus x to the power of three is equal to 80. So to solve this equation, I'm gonna first start by subtracting 80 on both sides. So now I get x to the power of two minus x to the power of three minus 80 is equal to zero. Now from here, I'm going to replace 80, negative 80, I should say, 
with negative 16 minus 64. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as, I'm going to first rewrite negative 16 as negative 4 squared and negative 64 as negative 4 to the power of 3. And I'm going to group x squared with negative 4 squared and x to the power of 3 with negative 4 to the power of 3. So now there's two properties that I'm going to use. And before that, I'm going to write this as x squared minus 4 squared, and I'm going to group this minus x to the power of 3 plus 4 to the power of 3. We put this plus because this negative sign distributes. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, which is this, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So for x squared minus 4 squared, it's going to turn into x plus 4 times x minus 4. I have this minus a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, or in this case, x to the power of 3 plus 4 to the power of 3 is going to turn into x plus 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 16. Now, because both of these terms have x plus 4 in them, I can factor out x plus 4. So I get x plus 4 times x minus 4 minus x squared minus 4x plus 16 is equal to 0. Now from here, this is equal to x plus 4 times x minus 4 minus x squared plus 4x minus 16. I just distribute the negative sign is equal to 0. And let's simplify this even more. Okay, x plus 4 times negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is equal to 0. So I get two equations from this. I get x plus 4 equals 0, and negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 is equal to 0. So first, for x plus 4 equals 0, all we have to do is subtract 4 on both sides, and we get x is equal to negative 4. Now, for negative x squared plus 5x minus 20 equals 0, well, first off, we have a negative sign in front of x squared, so I'm actually going to get rid of that by multiplying both sides by negative 1. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 20 is equal to 0. And now, to solve this, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is 20. So I get x is equal to negative of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 5 squared, which is 25 minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is 20, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 80 over 2, which is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 55 over 2. Now, this is equal to the square root of 55 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. And the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number i. So I get 5 plus or minus the square root of 55i over 2. So this is two more solutions to this equation. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to any of your friends and family.